Four centuries since the invention of decisions, Rock, Paper, Scissors has combined people's love for gaming, competition, and avoiding accountability into a process where they may exert their will onto others under the guise of compromise. And they said, we're gonna rock, paper, scissors over this. There are many ways to play. And the choice is yours. Randomness wins a lot more than you think it would. And much to learn about our opponents. That's not normal behavior. Some may win. I'll take my victory lap. And some may lose. I tend to be the one who loses the game. But we all play the game. Ugh. Whether it's for fame. Dee Snyder, the lead singer of Twisted Sister. Glory. The fist of glory. Or for fun. It's not that fun of a game. It's time to rock. Good old rock. Nothing beats that. Paper. Death by a thousand paper cuts. Scissors. Well, you give out a peace sign and then whoosh. There are many kinds of people with many kinds of experiences. These are the people of an era. These are the today people. People of the today time. As we go about our days at work, school, and second work, it's not uncommon for our colleagues to offer up a challenge of rock, paper, scissors when presented with a completely reasonable task they wish to dispute. Just what is rock, paper, scissors? It's comparing three completely inanimate objects um, and making a game out of it. It's a classic game, don't get me wrong, it's just... It's very bare bones. Like, it was very much, you can tell that it was the originator of that kind of style. It's a series of, like, strategic guessing games, uh, but, you know, only the smart ones win. Rock, Paper, Scissors is a great way to resolve disputes between two people. Rock, Paper, Scissors is, like, the cure-all for minor inconveniences. <laughs> it's a tale as old as time. Rock, paper, and, you know, who could forget scissors? Rock brings us together. Paper, so, you know, you don't forget the lyrics um, before you're heading into the uh, studio. And scissors, you know, again, you know, every once in a while, you're looking like a crazy mountain man, so you need to get a, a trimmed for the times. There's endless possibilities. It's like, it, it, it's just like the multiverse, man. In the palm of your hand, there's this infinite power to be had, man. Rock, paper, scissors is, I think, essential to, uh, to human existence, uh, probably more so than bread. If you're in a group of people and nobody can decide where you guys are going to go out to eat, everybody wants to go somewhere different, this is a great way to take all of the emotion and the feelings out of it and just leave it up to, like, mild chance. And once engaged with the stakes laid out, how does one play? Carefully very carefully. You have an opponent, an enemy if you will, and they will sit across from you. You have your platform, which is your not dominant hand. In my case, it's my left hand. And then you have the fist of glory, which is your dominant hand, I suppose. In my case, it's my right. And on the count of three, you're going one, two, and then on the third one, you're either showing rock, which is just a fist. Use your imagination here. Or paper, paper or scissors and you know like snip snip and based on what you choose and what the other person chooses there's a winner and a loser or there's a draw so every symbol has a weakness so rock is weak to paper paper is weak to scissors and scissors is weak to rock and the choice is yours and you have to choose very carefully. You got somebody throwing a rock, you got someone throwing some scissors out there. So rock beats scissors, and that is an important part of the game, is you have to touch. Yes, I have crushed your scissors. If you get a draw, which means the two people pick the same thing, you just repeat the process until there's a, there's a clear winner and loser. As each round unfolds, fingers are transformed into tools of war and brought into battle as each player's strategy shapes the immediate futures of all involved. You give out a peace sign and then whoosh, it's like a uh, total betrayal, man, like straight out of Halo. You, uh, they turn into scissors, but then uh, 
then all that comes is your guy. Uh, he comes in like with a fist bump. It's like, is it gonna be a fist bump or nope? It's gonna just be a rock and it's gonna smash the hell out of your scissors, man. I think rock, paper, scissors has really made you think about the strength of the average pair of scissors. If you're using plastic scissors, then obviously rock beats it. But I think it's interesting that rock can beat metal scissors. Scissors cut the paper, eviscerate the paper. The, the rock smashes the scissors, and the most the paper can do is wrap itself around the rock. And it's still a rock at that point. So like, the rock is still functional when wrapped in paper. It's no longer, it's not like broken. And if anything, like whenever I've tried to wrap a rock in a piece of loose leaf paper, the paper tears because the rock is usually jagged in some way. So I actually think it's backwards. I don't think it should be that way. I don't know why paper's there at all. But paper is there, and it does defeat rock every single time. How is such a feat possible? No one's gonna know it's rock. The whole point of a rock is to be looked at. That rock wants to live and be free and be open and to burst out into a million bits and pieces of sand in one day, but it can't do that if it's covered, so. I mean, I would say that paper just kind of has to win. But I guess since legality can cover, you know, a rock band, and you know, you can get a copyright infringement uh, served to you on paper. So yeah, I can see why paper beats rock. Paper cut. It, it uses paper cuts. Cut the rock. Death by a thousand cuts, man. Death by a thousand paper cuts. Paper beating rock. I think comes from the same idea that if you put a blanket over a bird's cage, it'll go to sleep. I think that's the general consensus there. If you take like an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and you just put it on top of a rock, it's probably gonna kind of sit like that. It's not gonna, it's not gonna lay like a blanket. It should actually be blanket instead of paper. If you want it to beat rock, it should be a blanket. If you think about it, like a single sheet of paper, just like a single human being, isn't that particularly strong or that particularly resilient. But it is possible to cover somebody or cover something with an idea or with a, a concept and overpower it. And if you get enough paper or enough people, you can overcome even a very sturdy obstacle like a rock or a mountain. It's a conceit of the game. While the core game remains the same, styles and preferences are quite varied. So you can play a couple different ways. You'll go rock, paper, scissors, shoot, or rock, paper, scissors. You have to confirm with your opponent if they are a rock, if they are a one, two, three, or a rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Which method is preferred? Everyone knows numbers go one, two, three, shoot, four. So you go on shoot before four, but not on four. Here's the thing. There are no guns involved, so I don't understand why shoot would be part of it. I don't need to say shoot. My extension of my fingers are going to show you what my decision is. I just think that you shouldn't have to say shoot. We already have enough shooting in America. I don't need any more shoots. You always say shoot. It's always rock, paper, scissors, shoot. If you don't say shoot, you're crazy. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I'm actually more of a countdown guy. Uh, three, two, one, go! <laughs> Kind of like, you know, on the stage, you know, two, four, six, eight, yeah, and yeah, that usually works out better because if people can get the rhythm then. There, I didn't know that there were people in the world who didn't say shoot at the end, that, my, I guess my thoughts are, um, more emotions than anything, like, what's wrong with you people? I usually just like to get stuff done. I'm a doer, not a, not a thinker or much, well, I'm a planner, but, um, so I'm much, uh, just go on the third hit, like, Forget the shoot, you're just wasting time. It's like a duel. You count to the number and then turn and fire, not turn and fire on 10. So, I'm a big fan of saying shoot. You don't need to say shoot. I, I think it's a little showy, honestly. I, I, think, I think it's a bit much. People say shoot are just a little full of themselves. You know, they're trying to be extra fancy with it. You know, what's, what's wrong with three? Is that so hard? Or, you, you know, you have to say shoot. I, I don't like it. I didn't even think about it. I always think one, two, three, go. I have friends who've, uh, who've shot people. Rock, paper, scissors, and irony. 
This game of conflict resolution is a breeding ground of disagreements, so healthy communication is key. Usually when you play rock, paper, scissors, there's a two out of three element to it. What's the point of best two out of three? No, it's just delaying nothing. Just, it's, it should be just a one and done. Two out of three. That's, that's the law. That's in the Constitution. Yeah, and not, it's the people who try to, you know, get out of it. Oh, best two out of three, uh, five out of seven, or whatever, you know. If you, so, you gotta start by saying it's two out of three. If you go rock, paper, scissors, shoot, and then you lose, and you're like, ah, oh, two out of three. That, yeah. <laughs> That's a different story. And we all have stories which guide us and shape our choices. Even in rock, paper, scissors. What do our object choices say about us? People who choose rock a lot are, are, are usually brash, you know, forceful type of people. You never feel good about choosing paper. It's never a hard paper. It's a, you know, you know how it works. Uh, it's not that like tough card stock anything. Like, no, it's not that kind of paper. Scissors could be like, you know, a type of personality or a person who is more um, direct and more focused. They're, they're doing something very specific that can cause harm and they have a very specific mechanism in which they work. So if they don't function in that particular mechanism, they break, which is why the, the rock beats it. Rock is a blunt instrument. The scissors are a very precise instrument, and so two different mentalities of being aggressive. Hand gestures could be a gateway into the mind, making psychology a significant player in this seemingly random game of chance. There is apparently a huge following of people who think that there's a psychological way to outthink people. If rock, paper, scissors does, in fact, rely on wit and mental prowess, how deeply does one's psychological state impact their strategy? Does this mind game open up deeper levels of cognitive engagement and discovery? Will we become susceptible to neurological infiltration and manipulation? Is there truly a psychological component? And if so, how might our mental states be used during this game? Oh, rock, paper, scissors definitely has a psychological component and the fact that you have to use intimidation a little bit. It's just staring into your opponent's eyes or, or your bandmate's eyes. It's your, you're trying to decide, it's all like, you know, we gotta rock, we gotta do this, but you might screw me. If they go into like a, you can kind of tell by how they're holding their fist. You know, like you can like analyze their, like the little micro movements of their fingers. And you can see like, oh, he's going for scissors. That means I should go with rock but they can do the same thing to you. So, so, here's the thing. You can't just like, be like, okay, scissors. No, you have to like, fake them out almost, where it's like, I'm going for paper, boom, fucking scissors. Psychologically, it, it's not for the weak. It's not for someone who's just fly by night, hey, you know, I've got these hands, let me do something with them. Um, you need to know that, you know, while words have power, hands also too have power. And they're not just for fists, they're also for hugs, but, but, um, psychologically, you need to know that uh, rock, paper, scissors can either leave you on top of the world or in the depths of despair. You have to know your opponent. Um, you have to observe them. So what you do is you first do mock rock, paper, scissors. It's kind of like a classic conditioning. Pavlov, if you will, if you're not aware. So there are some people who will be able to look at somebody and say, well, based on how aggressive they are, based on how risk-taking they are, or based on how they think about rock, paper, or scissors, they will be more inclined to pick one of those uh, choices over the others. If they have painted nails, they're probably more apt to go, I was going to do scissors, but no, as I think about it, they're more apt to go paper because they're like flashy, flashy. And you might say like, okay, well, Jerry over there tends to be more aggressive. He um, used to work in a rock quarry, so he has, you know, negative associations with rocks, and he seems to be very upset today. So you might use that all to come to the conclusion that, ah, he doesn't like rocks, he's upset today, he's going to try to take it out on rocks or whatever, and he's going to pick paper. So you use all the information to predict what he's going to do, and you might say, well, he'll pick paper, so then I'll pick scissors. And if you do it right, and if you're, what you're saying is accurate, you're able to outwit Jerry, and, you know, beat him in the first round. I'll make like an Edward Scissorhands joke. Like, 
uh, an off comment like, um, they're, they're holding a Slurpee, okay? And I'd be like, oh, look at you, Edward Slurpee hands. You know, something like that. And it gets in their head, like, if they're like, oh, what were you talking about? Then I know they're not choosing scissors. There's also just, like, it can give you a window into how a person handles loss. Because I've seen people get really mad when they lose a rock, paper, sizzle, scissors um, match. So it can tell you a lot about a person in general. It can be uh, very, very damaging to uh, the human psyche if they lose it. The point is, is that it's psychological warfare, and once you understand your opponent, you can get everything that you want. Some have begun exploring alternatives which are less damaging to the psyche. But how do these other options, such as flipping a coin, hold up against rock, paper, scissors as a decision-making technique? Some people argue it's not as fair as flipping a coin, and it isn't. It's better than a coin flip because it's just 50-50. But you know, with rock, paper, scissors, then it's like, you know, 50-50-50. So you got, that's, that's just extra math. You got 150% chance of, you know, winning. It doesn't feel like it's chance, like flipping a coin. You know, which is also fair, but it's, it, we have a little agency in rock, paper, scissors. The rock, paper, scissors is probably the best way to pick that person. Or flipping a coin, actually, now that I think about it. But not everyone has a coin handy. The convenience of rock, paper, scissors is its reliance on fingers, which are almost as commonplace as smartphones. But it's not the only game on hand. The kids, they call it eeny, meeny, miny, mo, which is gibberish and doesn't mean anything. So, I don't know what the big deal is. It goes eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollered, let him go, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. And then you could go into multiple lyrics. My mother's never said to pick the... No way. No, that's a waste of everyone's time. That's not necessary. As a game with a catchy song, is Eeny Meeny Miny Mo a viable alternative? Oh, oh, you cannot compare rock, paper, scissors to Eeny Meeny Miny Mo. Why? There's no strategy on that. That's just pointing at people. Rock, paper, scissors versus Eeny Meeny Miny Mo. <laughs> Mo. Uh, I would have to say that the strategy for Eeny Meeny Miny Mo is fairly basic because you always are going to know where you land when you start. I've thought about this many times over the years. Any mini mini mo is not actually random, especially when you're choosing between two things. So don't let anybody eeny meeny you if it's a choice between two things because chances are they know what they're doing and they're just gonna rig it to make it the thing that they want. Rock, paper, scissors and eeny meeny miny mo I think have their own places. Eeny meeny is used if you are trying to decide something for yourself. Rock, paper, scissors is when there's a competition amongst two or more people. If you know the meta of eeny, meeny, miny, mo, then it's just like, it, there's no point. There's no point. It's like, there's, there's no, it's nothing deeper. You know, you can like, when you do eeny, meeny, miny, you know, it's like, like what? Like, yeah, I'm gonna land on my sister and it's, it's just gonna be like, oh yeah, she can, yeah, uh, she can pick, uh, you know, who uh, can represent me in a family court case, you know, like, it, it it's, uh, it, it's bananas, man. I wouldn't count eeny meeny as legally binding. Not every situation calls for rock, paper, scissors. So why play it? And under which circumstances should we be playing it? Nobody plays rock, paper, scissors just because, hey, let's play some rock, paper, scissors. It's not that fun of a game. My friends and I used to play it just for fun. We used to just play round after round after round just because we were bored. If you want to prove yourself right, play rock, paper, scissors, man. Rock, paper, scissors is the best to solve any sort of sibling dispute. Um, I think it also works well amongst close friends. I would even argue that maybe you could use it on your employer. So, someone's uh, terminally ill, you can make the decision whether or not uh to resuscitate them. Most of the time it's really useful when you have two people arguing and you don't want to hear them argue anymore and you don't really think either of them is right but you want them to be done with the argument. Land disputes, uh, ergonomics, economics, ethics, grammar, 
You know, I think, like, uh, say in Congress, we could get a lot more done if we, after a series of debate and voting, things can't happen. Okay, well, we'll rock, paper, scissors for it. Things could get done quicker in the government if we just use rock, paper, scissors. Then the next step would be to solve war with chess. What are we having for dinner, or what are we watching on TV, or what bar are we going to? Things where you don't, the, mat the answer doesn't matter that much. It's a great way to decide and decide quickly. It's slightly more fun than flipping a coin. Um, you know, toppings on, on pancakes. Um, are, are you getting blueberries, are you getting chocolate chips? Rock, paper, scissors. Um, you know, are we, uh, are we including in the rider some green M&Ms? Rock, paper, scissors. Um, are we uh, are we having an opening band, or are we just uh, you know doing the first album in its entirety? Rock paper scissors. You can use it in business. You can use it in your personal life. You can use it if you're walking down the street and you can't decide who gets to walk on the left or the right. Well, you know what? You got rock paper scissors to decide who wins that argument, and if you get the curb side or the grass side, right? Only play it when all the results are win-win for everybody. <laughs> That's, that's the best way to, to play rock, paper, scissors. That solves the hurt feelings problem because if it was all like, oh, there's only one chocolate donut and the rest are like, I don't know, those like sprinkly banana cream filled thing is, or it was like a banana, like a donut and a banana and you don't like bananas, you have a potassium problem. Like if you have, some people have too much potassium and so it's like, oh, I'm going to get the donuts and you're going to end up in the hospital because you get the banana and your potassium can't handle that. Um, I, I'm a jerk in that scenario, but I, I won't eat the banana. I just, I, I won't eat it. The choice of rock paper and scissors has the power to change lives. Rock, paper, scissors has impacted everything. It's how I met my spouse. He and I went on a, a date and I was like, rock, paper, scissors, that you're going to be my husband. And he was like, uh, okay. Well, guess what? Scissors beat his paper. And now we're married. In the a butterfly flaps its wings a thousand miles away and it changes the entire world like chaos theory type stuff i'm sure that like my life has been altered in grand ways because i went to chili's instead of applebee's i just don't i can't make the direct connection it actually has come up in multiple battle of the band um scenarios where it's all like we're gonna play first no we're gonna play first all right well three two one go <laughs> And then we play rock for a few times, and then somebody has to, you know, eventually play paper. So, yeah, it takes a couple rounds, but, you know. It inspired me to do Scissor Man 2. Uh, even though there was no Scissor Man 1, but that's just, uh, that's just the idea, man. I start off in the middle, as all storytellers do. I go to my favorite restaurant, and, uh, you know, I have, I have a regular table that I like to sit at. And so I walk in, and there's already someone sitting there. So I'm like, no, no, I wanna, I wanna enjoy my time here. So I go ahead, go up to the table, and I say, excuse me, I like, I like this table. He turns around, and it's D. Snyder, the lead singer of Twisted Sister. So I'm like, oh, this is great. I'm gonna rock, paper, scissors you for this table. And he agrees, and you know, we, we agree to the, the terms and everything. So, if I win, I get the table. He doesn't understand that I know who he is. I know he is D. Snyder of Twisted Sister. He is the I wanna rock guy. He can't pick anything but rock. The table's mine. Rock, paper, scissors. I go to paper. I go to paper, because clearly this is the rock guy. He scissors me. I tend to be the one who loses the game a lot. Um, it, uh, I, I've had a lot of therapy, you know, based on the fact that I lost. I lost rock, paper, scissors just too many times. And uh, I, I've been told, you know, maybe don't play that game too much, but um, it comes along and somebody just forces you into it. 
I did it a lot more when I was younger. It's more of, I think, something that you would do as a kid. Um, but I, I know it's definitely not limited to children. Um, I just happened to personally use it more when I was a child. Children, nature's contrarians, are well versed in this very pastime. One summer day, down down by the old creek, you know. That, that was the first time I ever got challenged. Uh, you know, one of those forest people just walked on up to me and just said, hey, this is my creek. And I said, N no, y no. And they said, we're gonna rock, paper, scissors over this. And I didn't know what that was. So I, I really thought this person was, you know, gonna murder me. It was fucking terrifying. I was like, oh, hey, Dad, let's go play this game. And he says, shut up, nerd. You know, I use it a lot with my seven-year-old to take the that's not fair aspect out of him being like, I want to do this and you want to do that. I use rock, paper, scissors as like a way to be like, look, it's not, I'm not choosing my thing. You're not choosing your thing. This is a fair way for us to decide. I know it, it happened a lot more often as a kid, but I don't remember any particular reason why we did it. I'm going to do rock, paper, scissors against you, man. And if I win, I'm going to do the comics. And if you win, I'm going to be a doctor. My entire destiny was changed because I pulled out that one piece of paper, man. The almighty of paper. It is just wonderful, I, I, and I have no regrets about it. So like when I was a child, um, I had all these chores I had to do. My dad was really tired, you know, tyrannical with his chore list, and so I would say to him, oh yeah, let's play rock, paper, scissors, and if I win, I don't have to do it, and if you, if you win, I have to. And it also meant if I won, he'd have to do my own chores. Do you know that I never had to do chores from the age of eight on? That's how good I am at rock, paper, scissors. We were trying to decide, like, um, between uh, my brother and I, who would get to, you know, uh, chill out in the basement with their friends. And it's like one of those things, it's all like, all right, no, I want to chill out in the basement. No, I want to chill out in the basement. Okay, let's play rock, paper, scissors for it. And I played, and I rocked, and I won, because he was doing scissors. So well, we got to hang out in the basement, and that was our first jam session, and so, it changed my life from there. That's why I knew rock was the answer. Uh, as a child on the playground, um, you know, traipsing about through the dust and the dirt with friends. Hey, you want to rock, paper, scissors? Or what game do you want to play? Like, I don't know. Let's rock, paper, scissors to find out. Um, those were good times. Those are happy memories. I don't have very many negative memories. Uh, as I said before, I've been winning, you know, pretty much since I was embryonic. I think my earliest memory was probably like on the playground or in my best friend's backyard. Uh, when she tried to make me do something I didn't want to do, you know, as your childhood best friend does. <laughs> Doing things we don't want to do is the foundation of rock, paper, scissors. And with it comes the consequences. Win or lose. It's a gentleman's game. Rock, paper, scissors. And if you step up to the plate with, you know, wielding your rock, your paper, or your scissors, it's, it's a mutual agreement from everyone involved. Spectators, combatants, that you, you respect each other and you, you let the rock, the paper, and the scissors, they, they determine the outcome. Honor runs through everything. I'm a makaka myself, so it's a cultural thing to pay one's respects. You have to honor the outcome. If you don't honor the outcome, I mean, <laughs> curtains for you. The thing about the outcome of rock, paper, scissors is that you have to, like, once it's done, it's done. Like, there is, like, it's all, it is set in stone. It is in the fucking record books, dude. Like, there is no fucking, like, in between, like, there is no, like, get out of jail free card. No. 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 You might not like it, but the deal is done. 
it's not for crybabies. Again, it's not for the faint of heart. So uh, you need to honor whether you're winner, like I am most of the time, or loser, like other people I know. Um, you just have to take your lump, you know? Or your victory lap. I'll take my victory lap. The results of rock, paper, scissors have always been binding. People have always honored the outcome in my experience with the game. It's important to honor the outcome just like you would do any game. If you decide not to, then what you're really saying is that you're only going to accept if you win or you get what you want. You can't go back and change time like my character Green Not Lantern. Green Not Lantern knew what he had did, but he can't change it back. Green Not Lantern was like his uh, total... Um, he, he knows about respect, man, and that's why you gotta respect the, the rules too, because that you know better than uh, an alien overlord yourself. The fate decided that you either win or lose, and you took a chance. You, you gotta honor rock, paper, scissors. It is sacred. If you're participating in rock, paper, scissors, it is the silent, unspoken agreement that if you lose, then you are that person who must do the thing that nobody wanted to do. It's a verbal contract. You know, when you say, oh, we will do uh, rock, paper, scissors to see who has to go pick up the pizza. But not everybody plays with honor. If you have a dishonorable player, things are gonna get dicey with rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> I know that a lot of people tend to cheat when they play rock, paper, scissors. How do people get away with cheating? The way you can tell is they're staring at someone else's hands and they will kind of hesitate at the last second and they might go like slowly from a rock to like scissors. You can tell when people are cheating. You can really tell if you study them enough. And usually if you do that, the other person will let you know and it doesn't matter anyway, you have to repeat it anyway. Unless you're dealing with somebody who's truly like, huh, you picked it after me. I guess you're just better at this game than I am. The only way I could think to cheat is like if you changed your hand, like if somehow you could see what was coming from one hand and you like were gonna go scissors and you went paper or something. There's the, uh, Rock, you know, one, two, three. Oh, I, oh, I, for, I forgot to put something. Okay, we'll do it again. Ooh, and then they got a peek of what you just did. If I do so see somebody doing this or that, then yeah, I'm gonna call them out on it. Who would have the audacity to play in such heinous ways? And how must cheaters be dealt with? I've heard that it's possible to cheat at rock, paper, scissors, but I really don't understand how. So honestly, if you're managing to cheat at rock, paper, scissors, you're just better, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't happen in my playground. I won't allow it. I, I do not acknowledge it. And in fact, um, all, all deals are broken by even the implication of cheating in rock, paper, scissors. The, the people who cheat at rock, paper, scissors are slack. We don't talk about cheaters. They don't exist in my world. If they do, they may not make it to see another day. To go to the extremes to figure out a way to cheat playing rock, paper, scissors is, is something so treacherous and, and diabolical, it, it's usually re, you know, reserved for, for politicians. Oh yeah, you know, everyone thinks I cheat by like throwing out rock, but it's all like thinking like, oh no, you're really doing scissors. Scissors aren't this, this isn't scissors. I'm, I'm telling you this, this is scissors. This is here. This is her sisters right here. I have cheated at rock, paper, scissors. I don't like to admit it. I mean, I'm okay admitting it because it's against a computer. In the game, there's a, a Sega game called Alex Kid. There's a whole Alex Kid series. So I'm playing Alex Kid and Miracle World. And the the Boss battles are done through rock, paper, scissors, Jung Ken Po. And so I have been able to just pick pick the one that the programming um, needs me to pick. Do people still feel confident in the direction of rock, paper, scissors? I hate to say it, but I think rock, paper, scissors might be on a decline. You just don't see it as often anymore, but... I, I think if we work hard, we can keep it from going extinct. 
if it is on a decline, who is to be held responsible? The Gen Zers, the little TikTokers, they don't understand. And so what I'm worried about is that this um, beautiful, beautiful masterpiece of a game that has changed my entire life, it's gonna get lost. I think the biggest threat to rock, paper, scissors today is the youth of our nations. Um, and that we should, just, we should just pray for them all. Um, there's hope, but we should pray. Well, you know, kids these days, they don't, they don't run with scissors and they don't throw rocks at windows and they don't get paper cuts, it's all digital. So, you know, they're on their phone, you know. They don't understand, they have no, you know, they, and they don't do anything either, you know, you try to tell them to do something, they're not gonna do it. Kids, with kids not probably participating in as much, I think its days are numbered, sadly. Rock, paper, scissors isn't without its faults. There are surely other factors at play leading to its decline. People often forget, and this is this is a curious little thing. They often like, yeah, a whole bunch of us can play rock paper scissors. It's in, it's fundamentally impossible to really play rock paper scissors with more than two people. Because <laughs> if you do it that way, either everybody wins, everybody loses, because you all have to play the same thing, or half the people have to play it half, and the other half have to play something else. But then how do you decide amongst the people who all pick the same thing? Like it's just a lot of draws. It just doesn't work the way you think it would. The sheer, like, kind of boringness of it like it's just like it's too simple it's just like a there's not a whole lot of strategy you can do I mean you can like clear very clearly you can but like it's not quite what it should be you know I suppose if you don't have fingers it might be a difficult game to play automated decision-making programs that rely on three elements uh, will will really be the end of rock, paper, scissors. Uh, erosion. Um, you know, with the earth crumbling into the ocean, people aren't going to know what rocks are anymore, so that, that, that won't make sense what rock is. Uh, deforestation. Um, you know, um, if we're clearing out the Amazon, we're not going to have less paper and wood products, so kids aren't going to know what physical paper is anymore. And scissors. Well, I know a lot of people who don't even do scissors or cut anymore. They just use, you know, uh, head trimmers, so I don't know, maybe we'll replace it with, you know, erosion, deforestation, and electric shavers. The way kids add other, um, other choices to it. You know, when I was a kid, you could add, like, Tidal Wave, or you could add, like, a friend of mine would do Bruce Lee. He'd make, like, a little guy, and it was Bruce Lee. Um, it just, it sullies the, the pureness of the game. The classic game has staying power, but if people keep adding new options to it, I think it's just going to get to a point where we won't be able to... Like, you won't be able to go to other states and be like, hey, let's play rock, paper, scissors. Because they'll be like, oh, you mean... Uh, you mean swords, highway signs, and 76 Ferraris? Because that's what we play here in Indianapolis. So, it just, as long as it stays the classic core game, I think it could last forever, but if people keep fucking with it, it's not gonna be good. We're all gonna get along, and Rock, Paper, Scissors is really uh, only necessary to get what you want from someone else, and if we're all getting what we want all the time, there's no need for it. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of the video. <laughs> yes, well said. And share this video with your friends. Here's another segment to enjoy. Maybe down the line we'll find out that it has deep psychological, psychologically harming reasons for that, that make it a prohibited game. Or maybe it has racial or politically incorrect um, motivations behind it. Who knows? Um, that could all cause rock, paper, scissors to be snuffed out. Maybe it's the one thing that's impervious to all these things and it'll last forever. Who knows? Our children will be talking about it and our children's children will be doing rock, paper, scissors and It'll pass on from generation to generation. People can take solace in that. What solace means, I don't know. But they, they can have it. There is no doubt people of the today times will pass along the secrets of rock, paper, scissors to people of the tomorrow times. What advice will they give to lead future players to success? Don't screw up. 
stare at him like this. I don't know if I can tell you my secrets because of how many things I've won because of rock, paper, scissors. I can tell you that it's a, it requires focus. Um, eye contact, paying attention, body language. Yeah, um, you need to see your opponents, how they're translating um, through their arms and their hands and their wrists, like how you can anticipate what's going to happen with the hand. It all starts up here. Don't always do the same thing every time. Don't always do rock because people will notice and they'll catch on and then they'll do caper to cover your rock. Don't always do scissors because somebody's gonna bring you a rock. So mix it up, randomize it, and don't cheat. The strategy to it all is that if you actually double your symbol, so when someone wants to do rock, you do rock twice, you do scissors twice, or you do paper twice. I try to just pick a, a, a a symbol that's off the top of my head and not think about it too much and that wins more times than it doesn't because you're not really thinking about it that much so it's harder for other people to figure out you if they are trying to play a psychological game you're just being random and randomness wins a lot more than you think it would. A good strategy is that if you match the person on your shoot if both people throw the same thing my belief is that you should not change to the thing that's going to lose to what they threw before. Because there's a 50-50 shot that they're going to stick with the same thing again. So if they throw scissors and you throw scissors, you don't want to then throw paper the second time. You want to go rock because chances are they'll throw scissors again. Rock 100%. You always got rock never dies. Always pick rock. Always. It, it's a rock. <laughs> I think if you took a statistic, you know, count of um, people who play rock, paper, scissors, especially in the amateur level, um, rock probably is much more used than uh, the not. So, you know, you might want to think of paper. I think this is the second time doing these that I've referenced The Simpsons, but I remember Bart and Lisa playing rock, paper, scissors, and inside their heads, Lisa says, poor, predictable Bart. Always choose his rock. <laughs> and then Bart just goes, good old rock. Nothing beats that. With the winning strategies at hand, how likely are you to play rock, paper, scissors? Oh, I guarantee I will. I might even do it today. Hopefully not very likely because I've had to, like, I I mean, you you heard me earlier. I was, like, micro-analyzing finger movements. Like, that's, a, that's not normal behavior. You know, I might feel a... Baking up a game out of nowhere, man. Uh, just for the heck of it. I'm gonna use rock, paper, scissors right now. Ugh. I win. I won't rule it out. Uh, there's, there is always a possibility that I will use it. Very likely. Very likely, especially now that we're talking about it, I'm sure I'll be using it sometime soon. There are very few instances in my adult life where I have to rely on rock, paper, scissors because usually I'm okay giving things up or I still get one of the choices that I'm happy with. As a rock, paper, scissor, four-time tri-state champion, eh, I've had enough. You know, if somebody brings it up, I, I will willingly jump in. I will make sure, are we on three? Where some people like to do the shoot thing. Or, or, they, uh, or they'll or they try to squeeze in and, and okay, you know, best out of three and stuff. So. But if I, I honor rock, paper, scissors. I shall probably even use it later today because it's gonna be one of those things that I'll like, um, you know, are we gonna just rent a van uh, for, uh, for the tour um, and cramp up in the van again? Or are we gonna go with the bus? So will probably come down to rock, paper, scissors. In the future, I probably won't use rock, paper, scissors at all. I'm probably not going to touch it. I, um, while it's a passion of mine, I realize that I'm probably overzealous in my pursuit of winning this. And since I've won enough, um, I probably won't be using it anymore. But go. Go do the great cause. Do the work of the Lord. Play rock, paper, scissors. If I had any more kids that would talk to me, I would, uh... I would teach them how to play, man, because it's just the way of life. I'll be on my deathbed 
And when the Grim Reaper comes, I'm going to play rock, paper, scissors with them to decide which way I'm headed. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to win. You also find this in Pokemon. Fire beats grass, grass beats water, water beats fire, fire beats bug, bug beats psychic, psychic beats poison, poison beats grass, grass beats rock, rock beats ice, ice beats dragon, dragon beats dragon, and it's like, like that. <laughs> 